minutes of the April 21st, 2015 regular meeting. So uh, a motion to second any comments on the minutes. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item two on the agenda is receive and place on file drainage repairs. We have quite a few today. Drainage district number DD 183, Dayton West. Uh, tile outlet is washing out, stand pipe for overflow is broken off, and made by Doug Johnson. Drainage district number 295, Battery Township. Uh, tile outlet is washing out, tile outlet is washing out, north side called in by Larry Larson. Drainage district number 265, first side, tile line washed out at the outlet, may be replaced. And also, Dave Michelson, Dan Rasmussen turned that one in. Drainage district number 69, and a half, joint district, John, Johnson Township, Old Main broken and cracked at the end of the New Main sections, child not hooked, hooked up. Uh, supposed to have a two year guarantee needed 23 days to call back as that ran out, so we're going to fix it myself. Jeremy, I used an egg and Tim Lynn. Two B wash out north side of road east side of ditch turned in by Roger and Jason. The drainage repairs today. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to accept the drainage repairs. One I'll second. I have a motion to second any comment on the drainage repairs. Hearing none, all in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Item three on the agenda: approved wage increase for Tanya Martinson, office manager of Community Services Department, to twenty dollars and ninety two cents per hour. Effective April 29, 2015, for recommendation of candidates. So we'll move, Mr. Chairman. A motion to second and comment on that, Kit? Well, I know, other than she's really doing an excellent job. We really appreciate her. Really, she's a real uh, colleague with, <coughs> with all of our staff. Do you have to know what she's made now? What she's making now, now? Um, well, it'd be 241, I believe. 2041. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item four on the agenda, receive and place on file the nerve management plan updates for Keaton Mosier in section three, Roland Township, and Farm A, Humboldt, Larry, Later Farm in section 14, Deer Creek Township. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to receive and place on file the plan updates. That's read. Second. A motion to second, any comment on the nerve management? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion. Item five on the agenda, receive and place on file mirror management plan for parks finishing holdings 11, LLC in section 32, Dayton Township. Mr. Chairman, I move item five. Second, Mr. Chairman. A motion and a second. Any comments on item five? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item six on the agenda, approve and authorized charity to sign well marked Blue Cross and Blue Shield renewal group binder agreement effective July 1st, 2015. Mr. Chairman, I have a item number six. I'll second that motion. Mr. Chairman. Oh, motion to second. Any questions on the insurance? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item seven on the agenda. Approved request for assignment of county health tax certificates P90243 partial number 1914330002, partial 92038 partial number 1914405003. Partial number 92036 and partial number 1914405001 and partial P9203 dash partial number 1914440401 to Daryl Montgomery. I'll move item seven as read, Mr. Chairman. I'll second that. A motion and a second. Any comments on that one? Mr. Chairman, this is uh, another one of the county health tax certificates. I believe the county's possessed this one for almost nine years. Montgomery is paying the taxes due on it. We are waiting the interest due on it. Um, and I believe all but one are adjacent to his property. Or near his property. One does attach. So he's paying the back taxes, but not the penalties. Yep, I think Jan, she here, she was going to talk to. Um, but yes, he's paying the taxes due. It's my understanding from Jan. We're just waiting the interest due. Well, I, I believe the request here says that he's requesting that. Sale certificate fees 
table item seven. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 8 on the agenda approved revised integrated roadside vegetation management plan. Chairman, I make a motion to approve item number 8. I'll second. A motion to second. Any comment on that? This is just a plan that DOC has on file to make us eligible for grant money for seed and equipment to be used in the roadside program. Uh, this used to be just a kind of a generic three page document that they wanted updated in more in depth on what our county's doing in the roadsides. So that's just kind of the reasoning why just to keep selling the grant money. So you're using that money to reseed and spray? We get native, uh, we get native grass seed with that grant dollars and also um, equipment to be used for seeding or spraying or burning. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Item 9 on the agenda. Discuss petition received from citizens of the City of Oco to approve the installation of two substances. Mr. Chairman, I received a petition from Nancy Phillips. Oh, do we need a motion for a or just, just a session? Just a session. Okay. okay. And uh, I asked, I did receive it, we placed it on the file. Yeah, I uh, prepared to let us kind of follow my outline here. You have a copy in front of you. Um, you know, the, the tax position, petition requests stop signs at two locations. Both locations are entirely within the corporate limits of Oko <clears throat> on the extension of Farm Market Route D33. And uh, that, therefore, both locations are under the jurisdiction of Oko. Western County does not have jurisdiction. And just a brief history, we can, can, uh, to, I think this is helpful to the whole process. Uh, the, the, you know, legislation in, uh, that became effective July 1st, 2004, uh, had counties, the counties received jurisdiction, and, and the, they received jurisdiction and they see the road use taxes for farm and market extensions of, in towns under 500. And, and, uh, in, in the case of Western County, these are uh, Calendar, Clare, Duncan, Barnumville, Harcourt, Lehigh, Moreland, and Vincent. And then what the legislation did not do is that we didn't have anything to do with towns over 500. So Western County does not have jurisdiction and does not receive any road use tax funds on farm market extensions within towns over 500 population. And uh, those towns in Western County are Badger, Dayton, Gowrie, Oco, and Stratford. And however, even though there's no legal requirement or written agreement with any of those five towns, uh, Western County Road Department does continue to perform minor road maintenance, such as crack filling, crack sealing, floor leveling, some granular shouldering, paint, painted pavement markings, and snow removal on the extensions. Uh, it's not a a huge expense normally and to get from point A to point B uh, through a road that's not our jurisdiction it seems to make sense to do that and then uh, but except for the city of Fort Dodge uh, Webster County City of Fort Dodge we have a separate agreement to officially maintain the fringe roads along the, their port so but then uh, another thing that we did do in two, 2011 we major repairs and construction within corporate limits of all towns comply with Webster County's policy for farm market roads within corporate limits. Now, that became effective July 1, 2011. So, now, now, prior to the petition, I was contacted by Supervisor Campbell and Mayor Grote about a request for stop signs. And I, although I didn't, I really don't have direct supervision, you know, it's an extension of farm market route, uh, attached in the information I gave you is my January 13, 2015 letter to both Mayor Road and Supervisor Campbell, which I did not recommend stop signs. And then the traffic control signs are normally responsible to the agency with jurisdiction. Uh, therefore, the agency with jurisdiction is responsible for the cost of labor, equipment, materials, and future maintenance. Previous sign, sign installations in Badger and Duncan were completed and paid for by those communities. 
activities. I kind of confirmed that with the sign tech this morning to make sure we didn't put those up. Uh, I think Badger is over 500. It's our jurisdiction. At the time Duncan did what they did, it was prior to us having jurisdiction in 2004. You know, so in summary, since Ovo has jurisdiction, only they have the authority to install traffic signs. What's your County does not have any jurisdiction, doesn't have any authority to install traffic signs. Um, but I will abide by what the majority of the entire board decides. So, uh, I think in my, I will say my letter that I sent on January 13th to Mark Campbell and uh, Mark Grote, uh, that I did say that maybe we should have like, both agencies agree upon and approve, but it's my opinion that. It's totally in the city limits. I don't think you, you as a board have any jurisdiction. If they want to put signs up, great. That's, 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 our, that's their decision. And, and, and you know, they would also be responsible to follow up and properly acquire them and put them up and so forth, too. That's just my take on it. And I gave a copy to Ryan. I think this is the first time he's maybe aware of it. And uh, if you want to consult him about if I'm correct or not in my belief. So just for clarification, they're just, they were the ones that are okay to put them up, not pay for them or make them I have no idea. I don't know. Nobody's ever, I, I mean, the, the petition, if you want to yeah, read really it literally, says it says, the, city to put them up. the last paragraph said, this is due to the high traffic with speed of vehicles on Highway Street. Information was provided by West County Supervisor and parole have been granted by that agency once it's approved by the council. I don't think that's correct. I, I think the council is under the understanding that they needed approval from us since it was a farm to market road. Nancy, isn't that kind of what they shared with you? Absolutely. Okay. Well, and I don't believe that we, you could take any action you want, but I don't know if you. Well, I, I, yeah. I, I would like to make a motion that we, you know, uh, approve that. City of Otho's installation of stop signs on um, the I, was it E33 um, as per their uh, jurisdictional um, oversight or overview, and then um, agree to allow them to exercise their authority. So when Badger and the other towns want to do that, they need to come to us too, and we can do the same thing. Or? I don't. I don't think that they do for you. By doing it, are we kind of setting a precedent that we think we do have jurisdiction over it? If we don't, right. what do you think? I think I think we could make a motion to clarify that we don't. If we need one, if it makes any sense to, we don't have jurisdiction. They do what they want, but I don't think we should give approval to them if it's not our business to give approval to them. You, uh, it would seem to me that you could say that we have an objection. Yeah. Sure. But I, I you use, with all due respect, you use the word approval. And, and I, I would be inclined to say we have no objections if we want to get for And the record should It's, it's that split that here, so I just don't want to start a. Well, yes and no. Yeah. I just think we don't have to do anything. I don't have a hair to split. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a short, big short split. <laughs> <laughs> short split. So do you want to take action or do you want to say something? I'm willing to, to amend it to, to read no, it right. action. Yeah. Uh, what what do you think, Ryan? Is I, there's no harm in saying no objection. Okay. He has no objection to no. us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Fine. that's a bad I just didn't want to. Yeah. Well, I, I think since you know, the citizens took the time to yes. you know, hear the petition, I, I like that. Yes. bring it to us. We filed it. We accepted it. She's done a lot of effort into it. I think we should at least acknowledge it. And I will second it. Do a motion to? Uh, the town, the West County Board of Supervisors has no objection to uh, the city of Ovo installing signs on the P33. A motion to second. Any other comments from anybody? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 10 on, 10 on the agenda is set May 12, 2015, at 10:30 a.m. as a time and place 
for a public hearing to consider proposal to dispose of plot A of lot three of Tyson subdivision, of lot four in section 12, township 87, 87 range, 28, 28 lands, inside Lehigh Incorporation except tracks for a public purpose to the city of Lehigh pursuant to the provisions of section 331-361 temporary relocate overhead electric line along the south side of 145th Street, East of Dakota Avenue, in the southeast corner of Section 27, Township 90 North Range 30 West, Jackson Township, for the Um, I'll second Mr. Chairman. A motion and a second. We'll come to 911. Hearing that all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 12 on the agenda. Approve an authorized chair to sign utility permit for Mid American Energy to install anchor pole near the northwest corner of Section 20, Township 88 North, Range 30 West, Fulton Township, to compensate for permanent removal of overhead electric line along the south side of 250th Street, east of Baxter Avenue. Mr. Chairman, I'll move item number 12. I'll second Mr. Campbell's motion. A motion to second. Any comments on item 12? Hearing that, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 13, review vendor proposals to replace carpet and county engineer files. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Doug Vincent with Johnson Controls and my assistant Jamie did most of the work on this, but uh, uh, we did receive three vendor proposals, Jim's floor covering, uh, $3,550, uh, Carpet World, $1,550, and then uh, Cindy's Custom Carpets and Interiors was uh, $4,500 plus $950 for furniture removal. Um, all three were, I think the proposal was to remove substantially, well, remove the, at least the, the computer equipment and the stuff that's sensitive has to be removed by uh, working with Andy and my staff, and then the remainder they would remove until we told them consistently that story. So, uh, but, and uh, I think Jamie followed up with with uh, the low bid was Jim's uh, for three thousand five hundred fifty to make sure there was no misunderstanding about furniture and all that. And he was understood it correctly. So, uh, I got yeah. I guess originally I thought maybe we were going to wait until after first to do the. It was put on the agenda at the direction of I think Merrill requested that you know we you know collect the, the proposals and put it on the agenda. So okay, here we are. Thank you. Yeah, I'll just say my understanding was that yeah, Jamie uh, clarified that they're gonna move because there's a lot of furniture to move out there. And I originally wanted a full when I wasn't here remember, until after July first, but now we've looked Carol's looked at the budget and we prefer to do it this year. on the agenda, approve proposal to replace carpet in county engineer's office. Uh, <coughs> I'll move that we get the place of carpet in the engineer's office. For the new old bid, 35. I will make that second. Got a motion to second. Any comments on that? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. It's now time on the agenda for the citizens opportunity to address the board with items not on the agenda. I did find out after talking to Andy that this calendar uh, 
takes input, uh, basically, into the web. So their department would handle it. I kind of requested that we require everybody, myself included, for elections and what, to get these things on that calendar and get that on the list. You have public hearings and um, uh, supervisors meetings, range meetings, uh, Jan's annual tax sale, so many meetings. These kind of things we probably should be putting out there where the public does know. And I would think you guys may want to require us to do that. <coughs> Technically, how is that done? Can they each go in and do it? They actually can. I talked to them. Allison this morning. It is a uh, uh, something that we, it's a service that we uh, subscribe to. Um, and each, it has a login. And everybody, anybody that I would like to limit it to these department heads or maybe office managers, not just anybody, can go in with the username and password and input what they need into the calendar. Um, it's been there for a while. I thought we mentioned it to the department heads of Oakland, but maybe got lost. But it, it is available to be used. Um, and it would be nice to cover those fees, especially you know, range meetings or anything like that. And, and if something would be canceled too, it would be nice enough that you can go in and say this meeting's been canceled or something, you know, another place, because we do get quite a few kids on the website. So um, it can be done by my department or it can be done individually per, you know, per department. I think, like I said, I'd like to keep it to the either department head or office manager or somebody that's, you know, without that would just want to anybody doing it. And it's not something the public can get access to. I mean, they can't get in and change anything for us. I mean, so it's, it's mainly something we control. But if somebody wants to see if there's a planning zoning meeting going on, they can go to that website and. Right, right. Yeah, can somebody has to put it on. Right, we have to put it on there. And, and I say we could do it, but I mean, we could put it back on the department heads too. So I, I think it should be department heads. I, I believe that people. Yeah, I believe that. I think we should start using it. And if we have to formally tell the department heads, that's fine. I don't think Randy's office should be burdened. That just makes one more step everybody has to do. They just get used to going in there once a week and doing it or whatever. So I would, I would think that's a good thing. And it is something they can do from home. I mean, they don't necessarily have to be on our network to do it. I mean, you can access it. Because the actual calendar that is displayed, the login is in a different location. So. Is there some guidance? I mean, I don't need to. Yeah, I think, I think we need to direct that key. I mean, we need to have, I mean, you know, all of us are individuals and have them, uh, if we're each individual apartment's putting things on there, we need to have a scope of the yeah. intent and the limits of what we do and don't put on there. I would like to have some guidance. Sure. That, I guess that is something that the board's going to have to, you and the board going to have to make a decision on that, but you don't want to put on there. I mean, IT cannot, I mean, we cannot dictate to you guys, you know, what can cannot be on there. I mean, I mean, if it's something that's appropriate for the public to see, then I suspect that this would be want to be on there. If it's something internal, then maybe it not necessarily needs to be public, publicized, then maybe we can do that differently. Well, I would like to see IT bring information forward as to how it's, how it's used, how, how they access it, how to put things on there. And I think um, direction on content is probably going to be an, an ever-evolving thing. But to start with, I We'll do that. We'll send out a email to all departments, heads, and they can maybe point somebody in their departments to handle it with a with a username and passcode and how to you know in, you know to set up an uh, appointment or meeting, um, the times, and then if you have to uh, uh, edit it or whatever later down the road, how to do that. We'll we'll set up a uh, tutorial to do that also. You know, be structured in such a way that the department head. Is the only one that can add and change. <coughs> is assuming that the spot is open, they can add or change or delete, and no one else can mess with it. Well, now in this case, you're not going to have where the spot is open because you might have a meeting over at the bank building, and in, in that part, in that uh, um, conference room, you might have one sitting in this in this building, might have one down in the conference hall at the same time, or overlapping each other. So, you know, what it'll do is it will. Um, it should split out so that you can see that there's different meetings going on at different times. Sheila? 
I just had a thought, just because I had this call this morning too, and I didn't even know the calendar was there. But I wonder if it might be a better idea for each department to have one on their page, just for the fact, like, especially with public health, because they have so much. What if they go to the main calendar and it's on public health's calendar? Just something to think about. For I still think I still think you need a calendar. I mean, that's that's just this is what's going on. In the county. In the county. Because I might not realize that I need to go to the supervisors to find drainage. I'm thinking just kind of a go to place that these are the, yeah. you see it in the newspaper every day. Here's your little calendar, what's going on, you know, this meeting, that meeting, what. So maybe there's something like that that, that, that identifies that this is where that meeting yeah. is. So do you want to actually it's calendar look, thing, or do you want to, or just a, 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 what are you guys looking to do? Look for well, I'm just looking at well, something that says I, this is what's going I on. I think we're going to have to get guidance on, from you on that because mm -hmm. if you have just a calendar of yeah. I don't know if you're going to get all that information. It's possible, I try. So I think you're going to have to look at it, design it in a, in a fashion that's user friendly, public friendly, and we can have that information because most likely you're going to have 25, 30 things in some days. If public health has their events, tax sales going on, there's other things. We have four drainage meetings in the morning, and so I, I don't know. You may have best that's user friendly, public friendly, and communicates the best information in the easiest form. So, so yeah, I think we start there like Clark and Mark just said, in your office setting that kind of thing up, how to access them there. Then I think we make the step to maybe get input from each office as to what your list of things that are kind of required. Date, time, content, whatever, you know. So you're basically looking for a uh, Heading on there, it says calendar of events, um, events that are happening this week or, or something like that. Public meetings and events or something. The media, Mike can go to it and boom, he knows exactly what we're doing. You know, today, tomorrow, next week, if he wants to come to a meeting, he can go to that calendar and see what's going on. If he wants to come to our you know, all the Just be more transparent, I guess. All right. We can, we can do something like that. Any questions on that? Anything else from the citizens? Board of Supervisors, committee reports? Um, I'll just take this opportunity real quick uh, to introduce the public. Uh, Scott Forbes has been named the new uh, emergency management coordinator. We introduced Scott. He'll take over next Monday, so I know the paper's going to do an article and, and there'll be a lot coming out information wise once he takes over. But he's here today, so I just wanted to introduce him.
set and most likely will be done totally differently than it is today. And um, so what we have for um, staff now can be a totally different picture next year. Way too early to say what it's going to be, but it's going to be different. So stay tuned. You just got this system running with for us. I, you know, I guess I was in Utah at an ATV park in Utah. It's the biggest ATV park in, in that area. And we supposedly are going to have the biggest ATV park in Iowa. And I was in Moab, and the city of Moab was really, really user friendly with the ATVs. We actually drove our ATVs into town on a four lane highway down the main street, went through the McDonald's drive up, <laughs> got a burger, went to the park and ate it, and drove back to the to the trails. And I'd like to see us start working with the city, to, since we're going to be the largest in Iowa, start working with the city to see if we can find some user-friendly roads that they can do that in Fort Dodge. There's it's a city of only 5,500, but I talked to the sheriff, one of the sheriff's deputies that day, and they said they've absolutely had minimal problems with them driving down the roads and in the town. And four to 5,000 people a day go into Moab to ride those trails, not just ATVs, there's mountain bikes, there's hikers, there's everything. So if we're gonna, if we're gonna be number one in Iowa, we're gonna need to try to make Fort Dodge a little user friendly so they can get to a hotel without having to jump in a car and haul their ATV back to the hotel or to someplace to eat or to get gas or to wash it or do anything. So I'd like to see us start working with the city and maybe move in that direction. I don't know how far we'll get it, I did. The <laughs> local option sales tax in Moab, Utah was 13.35%. <laughs> and so I, I had to rent a I had to rent a vehicle for the last day. And just the tax on that vehicle was $57. <laughs> just the local option sales tax for that one vehicle. And they had they had five places renting these things out at five hundred dollars a day. So there's a lot of money being spent out there and a lot of money and I can see that coming to Fort Dodge in the next 15, 20 years, once we get the whole thing done out there. May I comment on this issue? Huh? May I comment on this issue? Yes, you should. Hello, my name is uh, Josh Wilson. I'm from Point Josh. Pardon me, I have very bad social skills. That's all right. The first meeting. Some of you know me. Um, Josh Wilson. I'm a very big advocate for the Civil Chief Park. Now, when I went back in your day, um, I made several calls and tried to contact our conservation or officers get this park moving forward. There is, as you say, so much potential out there. So much. It's a big thing for Fort Dodge and surrounding communities that people just see that. The problem is, is that a lot of our local riders, when the gates are closed, they're gonna ride them. They're gonna go down to Southwoods. They're gonna do what they want. Uh, we have this excellent facility out there, but unfortunately, um, we're having troubles maintaining the um, I've heard there's just not enough money allocated, not enough help. Um, I don't know exactly what the case is, but um, since April 18th, the park has been closed that I know of. Since 18th, it's only been open maybe four hours. It just recently got opened again yesterday. I got a phone call from uh, of, uh, one of the officers and said it's now open. I just, in my opinion, some of the opinion of the other writers is really hard to move this forward if the gates are locked all the time. 
nothing to explore locked up. And I don't know what can be done. I have offered help for my services. Um, <coughs> the equipment operator, some equipment out there. I'll help. I'll definitely help and there's so many other studies. And there is a question of what these ATV guys want to ride on. They don't want to ride on the green trail. I exactly. And I, I saw this to that point. Some of them want to ride on the rough stuff and the yeah. rocks and the trees. Yes. And I had stressed that point. Um, it's just a matter of perspective. People, what is unmaintained to some is challenging, fun, and exciting to the riders. And we, I think we just all, if we need to just balance that out a little bit and see what we, we can do to really, really move this forward. It's an excellent opportunity. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Any other comments? And then thank you all for attending today. Motion to adjourn. Nancy. I could talk to you on the phone if you want to ask uh, Joe Suter, your messenger. Yes, I can remember that. Oh, okay. Yeah.